Some motherfuckers. So at the start of the script, all we have is an FPS variable, a ready function, and a physics process function. We also have an empty scene with three pyramids in it, and they're not moving right now. We want them to move according to a different FPS than what the game is running at. For usability reasons, I made an FPS variable as an export, so that way you could just set the number and then you'll run at that FPS. But what we're actually going to use is two variables called interval and interval max. In the physics process function, interval will keep adding itself by delta, and then it will uh, keep doing that until interval max. So interval max will be the inverse of FPS since it will be the amount of seconds that have passed since the last frame. So how we get this is we just do 1 divided by FPS. So we're going to keep adding interval by delta and then as soon as we hit interval max then we're going to run this if statement. And at the end of the if statement we're just going to set interval to 0. So what this if statement is doing it's telling us when our limited frame is going to run. And it's only running every 30 or so frames per second. So usually your physics process will be much higher than that. And this means that no matter what your physics process is running at, your thing will run at 30 frames per second. As of now, we're not really doing anything with it, so we want to move it. In this video, I'm going to move it in a sine wave, but you can move it however you want. You could just translate it, you could just rotate it, you could scale it, you could do whatever. But here I'm going to make a bunch of variables. The speed variable will determine how fast the object moves regardless of the frames per second. And the radius variable will determine the min and max values our sine wave will be at. And the rotation speed will determine how fast our object rotates around. And all this will be according to our interval that we have set or each frame that we are running at our limited frame rate. Next we're going to set up an add variable and set it to zero. Then at each time we run the limited frame rate if statement, we're going to increment add by interval times speed. Since we're going to put this into the sine wave, we want it to keep like incrementing over and over again. It doesn't matter what value it gets to, it could get to the max float value and then just wrap around, it doesn't matter. We're, at, we're doing it to a sine wave, so this is going to go in between the radius's min and max value. So negative 1.5 to positive 1.5. Now we're going to set the transform.origin.y, but to do this we're going to need to capture the original position in the ready function. So I'm going to make a variable called original position, and then I'm just going to set it to an empty vector 3, and the ready function I'm going to set it to transform.origin. Now we have everything that we need to perform the translation, so I'm just going to set the original position.y, and then I'm just going to add by sign, and then pass an add to the sign, and then I'm going to times by radius. So what this is doing, we're uh, getting the original position that we're at as a center point, and we're adding sine times radius. So we're at passing in add to sine, which will be the speed of how, much, how fast it goes in between negative 1.5y and positive 1.5y from the original position. And uh, the nice part about this is that we're already timesing interval by speed. So what's nice about this is we're already timesing by interval times speed above and then passing it into sine, which means it'll move at the same amount per second no matter what frame rate we have. So if we set it to 15, it'll still move at 2.5 units per second. It doesn't matter about the frame rate. And uh, yeah, and you want to do this every time you move it. So even when we're rotating right here, we got interval times rotation speed. So interval times rotation speed will mean it will rotate 1.5 or uh, 3.5 units per second uh, in the y direction. So do a horizontal rotation according to interval times rotation speed. And let's see how this motherfucking runs. They're all moving according to 30 frames per second. And right here I'm just going to set this one to 10, this one to 30, and this one to 50. And we're just going to see how the difference is between those. And bam, one's very choppy and the other two are a lot more smooth. So you could run into at whatever frame rate you want just based on the FPS value you set. You probably should be running the FPS at something lower than your game's max frame rate because I think if you set it higher it might not affect it. It's just going to keep like every time you add delta it's just going to go into this if statement. You can also do this using timers but I feel like this way is a little bit better because it's, you, all you have to do is just like multiply something by an interval. And if you did that by a timer, the movement would be a lot more choppy, and it might depend on the frame rate you're running at. And this way is frame rate dependent, and I think it's a nice little solution that's pretty damn uh, short and just like very straightforward. So I hope you have a wonderful motherfucking day, and I hope this helped.